atmospheric haze that hangs over the city of Algiers during our visit deprives us of the opportunity to photograph this historic metropolis at its best. But we are able to discern something of the size and modern aspects of one of the largest seaports in the French Empire. For centuries, Algiers was the headquarters of piracy, the meeting place of sea robbers and the terror of all civilized countries, which it defied with audacity until the settlement of the French finally restored law and order. Under the flag of France, this great Mediterranean port has flourished and progressed, but behind its ultra-modern front is the Caspa, or native quarter, where the atmosphere of ancient Algeria is still apparent and the marts of trade are endowed with a colorful conglomeration of types, costumes, and personalities. Unlike the Mohammedan women in the more orthodox cities of the Mohammedan world, those of the Caspa do not avoid the gaze of the unbeliever, although they still cling to their Mohammedan veils. Here, the language of France is adroitly blended with the languages of Africa and Arabia and the result is a strange combination of talkative tongues, all converging at the coffee house, which has the appearance of a first-class jail. No one appears to be very much concerned about work around the coffee house, but not far from here, there is a solitary laborer, monotonously pursuing the even tenor of his way in order that water may flow into the fields of his master. One of the outstanding monuments of Algiers is a recently completed war memorial, which commemorates the heroic part that Algeria played in the last world war, during which she proved her loyalty to France by furnishing about 300,000 soldiers and laborers, over 30,000 of whom gave their lives to the cause of democracy. Perhaps no nation in the world has contributed more to the glorification and dramatization of war than has France with its colorful foreign legion and its national anthem, which is so thrilling that soldiers of all nations are inclined to respond to its martial inspiration. Across the Mediterranean, almost on a direct line from Algiers, lies the romantic little principality of Monaco, with its famous Monte Carlo, one of the world's most colorful ports of call. The Blue Dome building is the world-famous casino of Monte Carlo, in which fortunes have been won and lost. Formerly, the rules governing admission to the casino were very strict, and all patrons were obliged to wear formal dress. But today, wearing apparel is a matter of personal choice. The Principality of Monaco is under the protection of France, and it is the world's smallest state. It has an area of 368 acres, and a coastline measuring only a little over two miles. The population of the entire state does not exceed 24,000 inhabitants. of Monaco forms a peninsula rising nearly 200 feet from the sea. 
almost on the top of which stands the palace of His Highness, the Prince of Monaco. The building of this famous palace dates back to the 13th century, and its history is as thrilling as the story of Monaco itself. Not far from the palace stands the cathedral, which was erected in 1874, about the time that religious autonomy was granted to Monaco by the Pope. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In gruesome contrast to the cathedral, we now behold Suicide Rock, over which desperate men and women are said to have leaped to their death into the blue sea below. In spite of all the self-destruction stories that have been associated with this landmark, however, statistics prove that in proportion to its population, there are no more suicides in Monaco than anywhere else in the world. Nothing upsets a citizen of Monaco more than the foreigner's impression that his state derives all of its income and resources from this casino. As a matter of fact, Monaco has a revenue from its post office and its tax on gasoline, as well as a subsidy from France. The casino covers only the balance of the budget. Since 1869, the native population has been exempt from all income tax. And this fact alone makes the Principality of Monaco the most unique state in the world. The picturesque coastline of the Mediterranean leading from Monte Carlo into France and on to the famous resorts of Cannes and Nice is regarded as one of the world's grandest scenic attractions. And for centuries, it has been the colorful rendezvous of romance, intrigue, adventure, fortune, and chance. Many a millionaire has sailed his palatial yacht into the harbor of Monte Carlo, dropped anchor and remained for a season, hoping to better his fortune through gambling for high stakes. And in some instances, both fortune and yacht have been lost at the tables of chance. As we sail away from Monaco, we take our last look at its alluring mermaid, the casino, over which still lingers the memory of the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo and left a tradition that continues to attract gambling sportsmen from all parts of the world. Mm -hmm.